In this video, I'm going micro car. It's a Trojan 200, better known as a Heinkel. So yes, here we have a Trojan, which is a British built Heinkel. Heinkel of um, aircraft manufacturing fame. Obviously after the Second World War, um, all the manufacturers of aeroplanes looking for alternative ways to earn a penny or two. And uh, this really is uh, the very epitome of a bubble car, really, with a huge canopy on the back, enormous side windows, got these tiny little quarter windows, which open at the front, and a folding roof, which is also um, useful as an escape hatch. Uh, the tiny 200cc engine, producing 10 horsepower, is hidden here at the back. Uh, they don't all have tails, only some of them have tails, only the best ones have tails. And um, here we go, another Trojan 200. Uh, the fuel crisis of the 1950s, the sewage crisis, is why these cars became so popular. Uh, because, um, yeah, there wasn't much petrol to go around. So what you wanted was a tiny little car with little indicator ears, little ear indicators, um, that would be um, just the job and um, sip the fuel merrily. Uh, these were made um, in the 1950s. I think production continued into the early 60s, but problem was um, uh, BMC developed the Mini, um, which was rather better at being a car. This has just a single cylinder engine. So um, yeah, it's a bit minimalist. I think we'll start by having a peek at the engine, if I can work out how to um, access it. That, that clip there looks likely. I'd imagine there's one on the other side. And then hopefully we can lift this cover up. Oh, there we go. Oh, that doesn't show us much. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the engine is amidships by the look of it. There's the exhaust coming down uh, with um, presumably a chain drive in that cover to the rear wheel. Uh, so, yeah, that hasn't taught us much. But look, twin pipes on the exhaust system on a one-cylinder engine. That's quite impressive. So, yeah, we haven't learned much there. We must need to have a peek inside but um, we're not going to do that immediately uh, let's reattach these little clips there we go um, but we'll go and have a peek inside um, because obviously that's a bit of an experience in itself and someone is spying on me with a drone boo uh, so obviously the front door lifts up it's on a big hydraulic strut so you can pull it back down again uh, here are the pedals and here are the controls and um, clambering aboard is best done by just sort of standing in it and then sitting down and I shall hop across into the driver's seat where we can take in the um, enormous clock and the little speedometer there we go the focus has finally caught up with us um, various controls that obviously aren't um, illuminated at all no idea what they do down here is the gear lever, it's a sequential gearbox, four speeds forwards, and it does have reverse. It's a myth that um, some of these don't have them. Uh, we've even got a modern radio crammed in here. One of those ones that doesn't extend very far back, I'm guessing, otherwise it would be outside. Handbrake also down here. There's a little Trojan sign. Uh, the key I'll get to, because as soon as you put the key in the ignition, uh, the ignition is on. And um, yeah, lovely little, um, and then you can tighten that to lock them down, I assume. So here in the back maybe is where the engine hides. Does it hide under this cover? Oh, it's nice and warm. Oh, it does. And it's held in with screws. That's quite irritating. Oh, there we go. I can do them with my fingernails. So maybe we can get in. Aha! There is the tiny uh, one cylinder. Oh, I've upset the gimbal, sorry. There we go. Uh, there is the tiny little single cylinder engine with its single spark plug. Um, so yeah. So yeah, this is a little engine cover and these little screws sort of pop in there and fall out ever so slightly. Uh, maybe I'll, oh no, there we go, I can do this. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do that off camera because that's turning out to be a right pain in the backside, but you kind of see why you haven't got any um, rear seating or well, I suppose you could use it as a seat 
Um, but I imagine you get quite warm, you'd burn your bum back there, wouldn't you? Right, I'm going to attach that and we'll c continue. Oh, look at that beautiful sky. Um, yeah, this is how the door comes down. So you just pull against the power of the strut and the door comes down and then you can latch it down here. So there we go, that's us latched in safely. There is a demister pipe here. I'm guessing there's some pipe work missing. Um, so that's just to stop heat coming in unnecessarily. Single wiper conversion, yo. Very, very sporty. Um, but yeah, if I get the key, and we insert the key thusly, on comes the ignition light. And then I'm just going to put the clutch down just in case. Hurricane Dorian, oh. but rescue team so the stereo on again. To go, up. go away. It's been arrested on Noisy Batman. Right, um, and uh, this should start. Yeah, I wouldn't call it refined, um, to be honest. Um, you're going to get a bit of a driver's view now as I put it into first gear. Oh, well, it was a little frisky driving around the field ahead of us. Um, I don't know if the wiper works. I presume it's just that. Oh yes, there we go. Lovely work. Right, we're in first. Here we go. Oh, back end drifting, yo. We shall go and get my uh, mount, which I've left in talk, and uh, my little Invercar, and then we shall go for um, a proper drive on actual roads, because driving around a field is um, hard work. Oh, there's my two CV friends laughing as I get bounced around. Oh. Right, let's go and find Tuck. There's Tuck with her little friend. Oh, brakes and everything, what mod cons. Beautiful, and that's how you turn the engine off, is you take the key out. Uh, release the handle, push up, and we can escape. Right, with a certain amount of vibration, we shall set off around the campsite first of all. Starting to get used to the crazy clutch. So the engine um, may sound like it's a two-stroke, but it isn't. It is a four-stroke engine. There's Peel Trident there with its canopy up. And a scooter car. It's all good, they're all crazy. They're all mad little things. Right, we shall head out onto the road. Yeah, there's not much feedback on the clutch and the brakes are um, noisy. My little indicator ears are illuminating. There we go, we're into second, I think. to second, oh come on, chug chug chug. Oops, missed the gear. Oh dear. He did say you have to feel for the gears. There we go. Oh, 
we're up to 30. I don't think it's going to pull far from this hill. But the ride's actually better than I thought. It's a little bit bouncy, but it's not horrendous. Not clear whose priority it is there, but there's no one there, so it's fine. So we think this one dates from 1963, which is fairly late on. By that stage, uh, the Mini was a rather better bet. More refinement, more space, more practicality. The ability to do 70 miles an hour in a Mini and have that remarkable handling. Well, this handles really well. Just test the brakes. They're a bit juddery, but they're there. Oh, well, come on, release that entire 10 horsepower. So Heinkel also made scooters, which is why it's kind of motorbike technology in these things. But the steering's lovely and light and uh, fairly direct. I can't say it's blessed with massive um, feel. Oh dear. My gear shift, it's very small increments of movement. But you can just about hear the, um, the gears engaging, which tell you it has actually selected the next ratio. Do you feel quite vulnerable on these tiny country roads, but that's summer set for you. Oh yeah. Whoa, okay. That's pushing the limits of the ride comfort. Oh no. It's actually fairly wide, so um, cyclists are a bit of a problem here. I think this is as unrefined and horrific as I perhaps expected. Um, I'm going to upset all the Bond mini car enthusiasts because they are uh, they feel rougher. Oh yeah, we're taking him. Off gear briefly. Oh, fast road. Got to wait for a pretty big gap. Yeah, here we go. Thirty. Oh yeah, we're motoring along. The mirror is not very good, to be honest. There are no external mirrors, so I can't see the traffic jam behind me. We're doing forty. Oh, we've run into a forty limit. actually feels quite smooth. This is a pretty comfortable 40 miles an hour from a 200cc engine. In theory that's a screen wash button but oh, oh no, no we, there we go we got screen wash. Woo but then we have to come here for the wiper switch. Oh and the blade's not very good and the traffic's building up behind me as we hit a hill 30 miles an hour. Back up to 40, we're all right. This is brilliant fun. I can entirely see why people love these. 
Got plenty of ventilation for the roof. Oh, 50 limit, there's a challenge. Maybe a bit too much challenge, we're at 45. No, it's a gradient, oh, you're falling off. No, you're back with us. Sorry, that got a bit bouncy there. It bounced so much you fell off the mount. And there was one of those pesky minis. Oh no. Oh, she doesn't like hills. Yes, I think Trojan is the same Trojan that used to make their own cars, uh, which were crazy things. They even had solid tyres well after everyone else had gone pneumatic. Yeah, 50s still remaining out of reach. Come on, I'm determined now. Oh, this is our best bet, I think. Come on. Oh, no. Too many hills. They're not hills to most cars, but they are to a Heinkel or a Trojan. Foot absolutely nailed to the floor. We're doing about 42. Oh, she's getting the second win. No, speed limit. like the opposite of power. See if we can find fourth this time. There we go. Where did that BMW come from? There's no one behind me, it's typical. We're back up to 40. Oh, it's not a BMW, it's a Mazda thing. The mirror is vibrating so much I can't see. Are we getting a slipstream? Oh, good, good slipstream off that 308 station wagon. I mean, we're up to 47. Oh, we're almost nudging 50. I have to slow down again. Disappoint. We'll just give it some um, light um, work. So that's the side light position. Uh, then we go down to main beam and dip beam apparently. Although that looks brighter than that to me, but it's the bulb pattern that matters. And um, yeah, there's some light going on. And if I put the ignition on, I'll turn the lights off because I don't want to flatten the battery. There we go. And that's the only indicators on the vehicle. Uh, there are none at the back. So um, just the tail lights. So um, yeah, I don't think most people are going to notice those to be honest. Uh, but we'll just put the side lights back on again. There we go. Evil. Right, reinforce the mount a bit. I'll try and take you through how the handbrake, uh, the gears work. Uh, we won't get fourth here. Uh, because, um, yeah, there just isn't enough road. So. into second and then again another delicate move and we're into third so when it works it's quite a sweet little gear change but it is so so easy to get it wrong and the engine does not like laboring either 
because it's a single cylinder, it must have a fairly hefty flywheel just to keep it turning at all. Especially being a four-stroke engine. We'll straddle the um, horse muck there. Oh, of course, I hit it with a rear wheel. Very hard to straddle anything in a three-wheeled car. One other issue is you can't really do hand signals because the window is so small. You can kind of just stick a hand out, but not an arm. So that's problematic. But yeah, the main issue is noise. And this is with a roof open. I imagine with a roof on, it's even worse. But it's definitely an experience and I'm very glad to have ticked it off. I've discovered the brakes are not great, to be honest. Oh, sorry, too slow for third. But we're downhill, she's all right, she's picked up. Ever so slightly lost at the moment. That just makes it more fun. So we've got one wheel drive at this point. And this is what we're faced with. Get a bit of momentum up. Oh, back end's getting skittish. There we go, we're back. And you've only got slightly dislodged. Well, there we go. That was the um, small but perfectly formed um, Trojan 200 or um, Heinkel um, in Germany and other markets. Um, certainly not the most refined car I've ever driven, but by heck is it entertaining. That was um, a proper giggle. I'm glad I finally managed to get used to that gearbox. It's, um, yeah, sequential gearboxes do take some getting used to. But yeah, absolutely loved it. So many thanks to the owner for letting me have a play with it. Um, it is um, in fine, fine condition not too perfect just how i like them so um i shall say thank you very much for watching uh subscribe if you wish buy hubnut merchandise if you wish from hubnut.org and the uh, various support options can be found there otherwise i look forward to seeing you in a future video farewell Psh.